Hey everybody, Corey with Liquidator here, and today I want to talk to you about spider mites, aphids, and all of those little soft-bodied little critters that are causing harm to our plants. So we're going to tell you exactly how to mix up the absolute best spray preventative for them that not only will prevent them from coming back, but it kills them at their larva, it kills their egg sacs, and it also kills them dead. And it usually does that in one application. Uh, they do have a lifespan of uh, about a week, so you want to make sure that you spray, and then at least within that next week, spray again to make sure that we get their life cycle completely halted. And then you won't have to worry about them again. Make sure you always treat new plants that come into your to your uh, area that you're going to put your plants into. Always quarantine new plants to make sure that they don't have anything that you're bringing in. Always a good rule of thumb. I've got all of our ingredients here that we're going to go over, exactly how to mix it up, show you exactly step by step how to do it, and how to treat spider mites. So it's really difficult for me to have any plants that have spider mites because we keep it, keep it well treated. This is all organic and natural. It's completely safe. You can get it on your skin, everything else. You just wash it off. It's perfectly fine. It won't harm anything or anyone. Let me bring you in and let's show you what spider mites actually look like. So if you look down in here, you see those little white specks and you can see that kind of wispy web that's around here. That's spider mites. And what they'll do is they will suck all the nutrition completely out of your plants and they'll leave your leaves looking just like this. So they are a major, major predator uh, with plants. Spider mites are arachnids, so they are spiders. And they, instead of eating insects or other, other flesh, they eat plants. So they're herbivores and they do destruction on your plants. A few of them, just a few of them getting on your plants will leave them just completely like this. Now this plant's really strong. He's trying to send up another shoot from his roots, but we still have that big infestation. These guys will jump. So just because you take a plant away doesn't mean that the other surrounding plants in that area aren't infested. So make sure if you find them, if they are infested, make sure that you spray every single plant in your entire home or area where they're at. If you're a garden center, spray the entire garden center. You can see all these nasty webs that, that are in there. Sometimes you'll actually see them crawling around. Um, there is a big spider down here in the bottom of this one as well. I don't know if you can see him. He's right there. So you can see him right by the, the leaf there. That's an actual spider. So spiders and spider mites can coexist in the same area. Um, usually spiders will start eating them. If you see a lot of spiders in your area, start checking your plants for insects. Start checking them for aphids, things like that. So if you see a lot of spiders, that's a good indication that you have a spider mite issue. Now, with spider mites, they're going to be these little guys. Check underneath your leaves, and you'll start seeing like these little glistening points in the bottom of your leaves. That's where the spider mites are biting your plant, and they are sucking out the sap or the, the liquid out of your plants. So if you look, you can see it on the stems. Right there, you can see those glistening points. Those glisten points, not the hairs there, but the glistening points. That is where aphids or spider mites have been biting the plant, making the plant bleed, and then they lick that up and, and kind of drink that. So this one is really infested really bad with spider mites. You can see underneath this leaf right there on the very tip. All that webbing and everything, those are all egg sacs and spider mites right there. So it's important to spray not only the top of your leaf, but the bottom. Down in the crook of the, the plant here, those are, those are spider mites right there. So you can see all of those in that area. So that is what they look like. These plants were deliberately infested with spider mites so I could do this video. But we know that, the, that we'll bring them back. So worst case scenario, it is going to kill your plant and all the rest of your plants unless you treat them. So it's really important. So let's talk about how we're going to mix this up and how we're going to treat them. So uh, the first ingredient that I want you to get is Dr. Wood's natural castrol soap, but get the peppermint. Uh, peppermint will repel all of the other insects. So flying gnats, it'll repel spiders, it'll uh, repel all the, the gnats, um, spider mites, all the soft-shelled little, uh, little critters. So it'll repel them. So that's why we want to use peppermint oil um, in our castrol soap. This is the best soap I've found. They are not a sponsor of this video in any way. 
or any of the product um, names. I just have these because it's what was readily available or the brand that I specifically recommend because this is actually thicker than all the others that I've found and you want a good thick soap for this. Um, and it's not a high sudsing soap. So this is an all natural organic soap but doesn't have a lot of suds. So this is really awesome stuff. So Dr. Wood Soap, we want that. The next one we want is the same brand, only tea tree. So tea tree oil will actually disinfect your plants. It's a cleansing agent as well as it will kill the egg sacs and larvae dead. So it actually soaks into their egg sacs and completely kills them. So this gets rid of your uh, infestation 100%. So tea tree oil, peppermint oil, Dr. Woods, Castile soap. Don't use dish soap on your plants. There's a lot of things out there that say, oh, just grab a bottle of Dawn or grab a bottle of Ajax or whatever you have. Don't do it. They have chemicals inside of there that will harm the leaves on your plants. So they have sodalites in them and dissolve things that uh, are other chemicals that combined degreasers, things like that. Stay away from all of that. It will harm your plants. It'll start having your plants drop leaves, causing burn marks, things like that. So use, use these. Find them, order them online. Um, if you're in Utah, there's a store called Harmon's. That's where I go to get this, but they're, they're found everywhere. So, uh, the next thing that we want is, uh, we want alcohol. It doesn't matter about the brand. Um, it just matters that you don't want anything above 70%. Um, 80%, 90% alcohols can have other dilutions in them that can cause issues. Stay around 70% isopropyl and you'll be good to go. So standard isopropyl alcohol, grab it out of your medicine cabinet. Perfect. Ready to go. The other thing that we were going to add is hydrogen peroxide. Now, don't be scared of it. Hydrogen peroxide is very, very simple. All it is is an oxygen molecule with two hydro hydrogens rather than a single. So we're adding an extra, uh, an extra molecule of oxygen onto that pair of molecules. So the extra oxygen actually destroys and makes the insects kind of explode. So it really gets rid of them. It gets into all their little pores and stuff and starts eating them away, but it doesn't harm your plants at all. So it's just extra oxygen. So hydrogen peroxide is nothing more than water with an extra oxygen molecule. So it's super, super easy. Um, so you don't have to be afraid of it. When you get this, make sure it's the 1%. If it's more concentrated than that, like 3% or any of those, you're going to have to dilute this before you use it. 1% is as strong as you ever want to go on your plants. So don't go any stronger. More is not better here, guys. More is not better. So let's make sure that we stay clear on that. So how we're going to make this is really easy. I use these pumper spray um, systems. This pumps up. It puts air uh, down inside of here, pressurizes it pull the trigger and it sprays. I like those because it has a finer droplet than the squeezy type bottles and I'm not constantly squeezing to, to, to do my plants. So, and these hardly ever wear out. If you keep them clean, well conditioned, keep their filters clean, they, they last forever. I highly recommend this if you have a few plants. Um, write on this one that this is your, your plant soap. Uh, keep it separate from everything else. Use one for watering or misting that you want with normal uh, clear water. But on this one, uh, write soap on it so you always know this is what you're going to use for your plants. So let's get started. It's going to be pretty easy here. So I've got about two quarts of water in here. So I mix this up in two quarts because that's what this bottle is. You can mix it up for a gallon, a quart, whatever you're using. Just change the recipe according to what you're doing. But this is two quarts. Mix up just enough that you're going to use that time. Don't leave it sitting around because the active ingredients can go stale over a period of time which means they're not gonna be as effective. Mix it up and use it and then discard the rest. So let's get started. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a quarter cup of tea tree. So quarter cup tea tree. You can see this is kind of a thick soap. It's not like most of them. So it's kind of like uh, warm honey, which is great. So we're going to do one quarter cup of the tea tree oil castile soap. Okay. And set that off. We're going to do one quarter cup of peppermint. And 
And by the way, guys, this smells so incredible. So it's just going to make your whole plant room, everything smell great. So it's, it's kind of wonderful. All right. So we've got our soap in, in our water. Um, use warm water or room temperature water. It's best. Um, I use filtered water because I don't want to see hard water deposits on the leaves. If all you have is tap water, you can use tap water for this, but it may add water droplets uh, to, um, to the leaves once it dries. So that's pretty easy. And then we're going to use one teaspoon of peroxide. That's into two quarts. And like I said, guys, more is not better here. One teaspoon. I'm sorry, not teaspoon, tablespoon, excuse me. One tablespoon. Because it's two quarts, so it would be a teaspoon per quart. So, all right. Now we're going to use the isopropyl alcohol, and we're going to put one cup of isopropyl alcohol in there. All right, so one cup of isopropyl alcohol. All right, that is our mix. So that's everything in there. So what we're going to do is put our top on. Now, the peroxide is really incredible because this is actually a three-in-one that we're doing. So we're taking care of uh, the molds, mildews, um, any type of parasitic attack that's, that's on our plants that we can't see, microscopic levels, or if you have a mildew issue uh, on your soil or on your plant itself, the peroxide is going to 100% take care of that. So that's our first. Then we're gonna take care of all the larvae and all of our eggs. That's where we use the tea tree oil. The soap actually coats the abdomens and the breathing areas of the aphids and things. That's how this works. So it coats that, makes it so they can't breathe, and then they die. But the active ingredient with tea tree oil is actually going to cut them apart. It's going to get in their little cells and explode them. So this works two ways. So you got the soap to suffocate them, the tea tree oil to make sure that they all go away. If they have any egg sacs or anything else, this is gonna kill everything that they have, even their egg sacs inside of them. So if you have little dead ones that fall and they have egg sacs inside of them, the eggs will actually hatch with inside of them and come out and reinfestate. This kills them dead. We have the peppermint oil, which is gonna get rid of all of our external flying insects so they won't come back and lie larva and it gets and it repels them. So if you have ants or anything like that, perfect. This whole thing can work for ants. If you have them outside crawling around, all the little sugar ants, spritz this on there, it'll completely get rid of them dead as well. All right, the alcohol is really important because that's gonna disinfect our plants as well as the peroxide does. But the alcohol is also going to get down in there and suffocate them as well. It's going to clean out the web structure so it breaks down the adhesion level between the webs. So when we break down the webs, that's where we can get down in there and get at the heart of them where they live. So all their egg sacs that are underneath the web, if you don't use alcohol in there, the webs won't break down. And therefore, all those eggs that are in there, remember one egg, one aphid or one um, spider mite, they'll lay thousands of babies within a couple of days. So their life cycle is really short, but they lay thousands and thousands of eggs. So in a matter of days, you can have a major infestation. So you want to be really careful with that. So that's why we use all of those. So we have a three-in-one. We kill them, the adults. We kill their babies. We kill their eggs. And we're taking care of any mold problems that we have on our soil or any molds that we have on our leaves. And it completely cleans our leaves as well. It cleans out all the pores so the plants can breathe easier. It's kind of like blowing their nose with a whole bunch of mini tissues. So kind of fun there. So all we're gonna do here, pump this up because that's gonna pressurize our vessel. Okay, and then what I usually do is I check it just to make sure we've got a good spray. Now, you can see all of this right here. If you have soil that you're gonna recycle and stuff, treat your soils before you put them back in there. Give it a little spritz and you can see the spider web, everything. It magically just disappears. You'll see the little spider there. He's crawling around, he doesn't like it but that spider is done, just that quick. So if it'll kill a full adult spider that fast, 
you know it's going to kill all these little critters. So that's why he came out and started to run around. Is he's like, oh my gosh, this is this is like acid to me, and I can't live in it. Well, it doesn't harm us. You can get it on your hands. All it is for us is just a really good cleaning agent for us. So really, really awesome there. Um, you can see the webs on here. We'll give that just a quick spritz. See how those webs are instantly dissolved. And that's what you need. So it's just a quick spritz, a little bit like that. It's not going to harm your plants. You don't have to rinse them. You can if you want. And then on these, make sure you get underneath their leaves on top. Do this outside if you need to so that you're not going to get like water everywhere. Okay? Give them a good coat. You can do this in your sink if you want. So that takes care of those. So those are awesome. Now, bigger plants and things like that, we want to make sure... Um, okay, so for Monstera, they have these really nice, nice big leaves. This is a Swiss cheese. As they start to get older, they'll naturally split their leaves like this, which is awesome. So how you can tell if you're starting to get these, you'll get those little yellow dots that'll just be randomly inside the leaf. Um, you'll start to see leaves dying at edges, things like that. All you'll want to do at that point is take a flashlight, shine it on the top of the leaf, then look at the bottom of the leaf. If you're seeing holes where it goes through the leaf, where they might be yellow, then you've got, you've got an infestation whether or not you can see them or not, because leaves won't ever do that. So all you do for these guys, give them a quick mist like that. Give them a mist on their backsides, down by their stems, spray their leaves. I like to handle each leaf, make sure I get each leaf coated. Okay, and then we'll do all the back backs of the leaves. All right, and then I give a quick mist to all their stems, especially down here near the ground. And then I'll give just a little quick mist on the soil to kill anything that's on that soil that may have jumped off. Remember, when you start spraying, then all these guys are going to start moving around and everything. So make sure you take care of spraying everything everywhere. So that's how you take care of that. You just let it air dry. Keep them out of direct sun after you've applied this until it's completely dry. I recommend 24 hours just to make sure it's completely dry. Because any type of moisture that's on leaves, when sun comes down and hits it, makes little bitty magnifying glasses which can burn the leaves. So it's kind of like, you know, you have a magnifying glass, you put it in the sun, it gets really hot underneath. That's the same thing that happens with droplets of water. They make these little uh, concave um, divots where the leaf is, and it's convex on the top where the sun comes through. So it makes a perfect magnifying glass and it'll burn your leaf. So when you water, water in the evening, water early in the morning, make sure your leaves are dry. You won't have any problems. So big plant like this guy, really easy. Just give him, this is why I like to pressurize, because see, I can just push this button and I can just give it heck. And I can make sure that it goes. I don't have to squeeze a bottle all the time. Okay, once I get it done like that, I'll usually tip the plant so I can see underneath the leaves. And remember, we're not gonna hurt our plant, because this is all natural. And easy. All right. Just make sure you get all your leaves, that top coating of soil, because remember we want to disinfect that, get rid of any molds or mildews that's there. And that's completely perfect, just like that. And that plant is going to be healthy and healthy as they can get, because there's no infestations, there's no spider mites anything like that. It's safe enough for corn plants, um, all your orchids, everything like that. Orchids, probably let it sit 15 minutes, give it a spritz off, just because orchids um, have those uh, aerial leaves, aerial roots, and we want to just make sure that they're nice and cleaned off. We don't want to plug up anything with the soap. So this is easy, just like that. Just coat it, coat it underneath, get some on the soil. Um, it's safe enough even for begonias. So this begonia is pretty awesome. Um, so it's really easy to spritz the begonia leaves. Begonias typically don't like to have moisture around their leaves. So make sure these guys get aired out. And 
that's it. That's as quick and easy as it is to treat your plants. So that one's completely finished as well. Um, works great for rubber trees as well. You start getting those droplets and things. You'll start getting these burrow marks, um, black marks, or burnt marks that'll look like on your leaves. It's probably infestated with a uh, burrowing uh, type insect. And so all you do, I like to spray the bottoms of the leaves on these guys first. And then I go ahead and give them a mist on the top. So it's super easy. You're going to smell the alcohol. You'll smell the peppermint oil, the tea tree oil. It's kind of refreshing. It's kind of nice. Um, and the other thing is, is this will help to clean your plants. You'll find that your leaves will be glossy um, and things like that because they're completely clean. Um, and that's what you want to do to prepare your leaves, get everything done. Now, once you get all done with that, it's really important to give them that extra boost of nutrition. So we want to make sure that we give them some nutrient after that. So that's where our liquid dirt is going to come back in. You know about liquid dirt. You've seen it. Um, everybody is talking about liquid dirt because it works. It works for every single plant. It's really economical. This bottle makes over 50 gallons worth of nutrient. You further break that down and use that for your plants. So we've already done that here. So we have a gallon of water in here, one cap of liquid dirt inside the water. Um, you've seen me do that before. And then all you're going to do for your plant, let's do this Monstera right here, because that's going to be easy to, to see there. All you'll do, take the lid off. And then what I do, I don't pour the jug. I just push down on the jug because it's flexible, makes it really easy and controllable. Use one cap. Give it one cap right on the plant. And that's all you have to do to feed your plant. So we've taken care of all the infestation. We've taken care of getting rid of any insects that's going to try and come over to it and get reinfestated. And we've taken care of all their egg sacs. We've taken care of the mold problem, um, any type of, of disruption or anything in the soil as far as molds, mildews, any of that stuff. Mosses, it won't hurt mosses. So if you're growing moss to cover your plants and you have natural moss on there and you're concerned about that, don't be. This mixture will not harm moss at all either. So it only harms those bad things that we don't want around. As you can see on these, they are completely ready to go and clean. We don't have to worry about scrubbing leaves. There's that leaf that we had before, and you can see it's perfectly clean now. So just a few, a few soap suds left on there, um, but the whole plant from stem to stem is completely taken care of. So no more little creepy crawlies, no more anything. If you're looking through your, your plant and you maybe find a spot that, well, you know, maybe I want to retreat that, then go ahead. Like these really hard to, to get little spots like that, get your sprayer in there and just coat those areas really well. All right, so we've went through how to make this. We've went through all of our ingredients and what it takes to, to make this and uh, to get everything together for, for what we do on making this preventative and to kill them dead in their tracks. So the main thing that we want to make sure of is that we monitor our plants. If the first sign that you see that something's going on with their leaves, check them over, look at them, make sure what's going on with them. Do they have an insect infestation? Get them as soon as you can because they can get way out of control and we don't want to have dead plants. We want to have nice, lively plants. So let's get rid of them as soon as we can see them. Retreat this at least once a week for the next month because we want to make sure if we missed an egg, which is really easy to do, they're microscopic. If we missed an egg, it's going to rehatch out. So within that week, we'll be able to completely take care of them again. Do that once a week for the next month on whichever plants that you're doing. And I recommend treat everything all at once. Don't treat some one day and some the next day and some the next day because they can jump and they can leap back on a plant that you've already treated. Now, the mixture that's here will stay with the plant. That's why I don't re-rinse. So if they come over to have a bite, it's gonna gum up their mouth and make it so they can't eat, and they're gonna die because of that as well. So that's the importance of leaving that on your leaves. Some plants you wanna mist back off. If they're really a delicate plant, wash them back off after about 15 minutes. Retreat those more often if you happen to see any infestations. But that takes care of how to take care of spider mites. I know it was a little bit of a long video, but I wanted to walk you through it step by step 
let you see what it looks like, the ingredients, how it is, how to treat them, how to get it on your plants, and overall the health and everything of your plants benefits because of it. And I thank you so much. This has been Corey with Liquid Art, and I hope you enjoy this. Please check out all of our other videos, all of our other posts. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to give a, give a ring to us. Our telephone number here at the store, 385-296-1684. We're based out of West Jordan, Utah, 7238 South Airport Road. We're in Suite 6, and we are expanding our store. So we're going to be adding more than 2,000 square feet to our store, and that's going to be really awesome here to come. So I thank you very much for watching. Please leave comments below and let us know how your plants are doing. Let me know if you've tried this or uh, how it's doing for your plants as well. We're always here to help you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day.